Okay, so today we're going to talk about our wired bypass modules. These are the ones that you'll need to actually splice and tap into the factory wiring harness of the intake air temperature sensor, the MAF sensor circuits to install. Uh, so what comes with the kit? You've got the bypass module, you've got a set of block off plates for your vehicle. This is a 4.7 liter, so we've got the 4.7 liter plates, a 10 foot piece of starter relay wire, um, some of the things you'll need to complete this installation, some 10 millimeter ratchets, mm -hmm. wrenches, and sockets. Um, a 10 millimeter deep well helps a lot for these, for your block off plates. You'll need a good pair of wire cutters, um, a digital multimeter, test probe, and you'll also need either a soldering iron or some quality butt splices to make your connections, as well as you might want to get some heat shrink tubing, some split wire loom, and some, some zip ties to complete the installation. Okay, so here we are. We have our wired bypass kit that we're going to talk about installing here. We have the wired module. Uh, there are six wires on this module, one of which is for the starter relay wire that we'll need to run separately. To install this, there are five wires that we will need to tap and splice into our factory intake air temperature MAF sensor circuits. Uh, on this vehicle, this is a 2005 Tundra. The sensor is located here on the air box. On some of the other vehicles, it might be on the back side here or a little bit further up the intake runner towards the throttle body. Uh, some of the V6s, the sensor is actually underneath the uh, engine cover. All easy to locate, it's all, always on the intake uh, runner somewhere. Uh, so to get started with this, uh, keep in mind though that to make these connections we do need to mount this somewhere close by since we're going to do the wiring uh, somewhere nearby like the back of this or the back of the air box is handy. You'll want a little bit of extra wire, as much wire here as you can to get to work with. We're going to disconnect this sensor. Just give the tab a little squeeze and pull it off. Pull this harness out. There's a little clip here you can take it out of this clip too. Then with a finger or a, a small screwdriver, you're going to want to split this wire loom open and pull all the wires out. Just get it split and then you can usually just pull it apart like that. Just keep in mind the more wire ha you have here to work with the easier it will be. Um, in the installation instructions there's a wiring diagram that these wires will match for your vehicle. Uh, the diagram also shows you all the connections that you will need to make. Uh, there are three wires here that we will need to just tap into and then there is one wire that we will need to actually cut. And that cut wire will, each side will make a connection to one of the bypass module wires. Uh, in the installation instructions, we recommend soldering as the best method for making these connections, since it's the best way to ensure that you don't have any extra resistance in your connections, um, and they're the more secure, they're not going to pull apart. You can, of course, use some quality butt splice uh, terminals and some maybe even some dielectric grease to make sure corrosion is not an issue. Uh, those are a little bit bulkier, so it'll be a little bit harder to get back into this factory wiring if you do that. So follow the, follow the diagram, make these connections, however you choose to do, and then mount your bypass module either here on the back of this or on your airbox, somewhere close by, so that's easy. Once you get all those connections made, go ahead and stuff all your wires back into this factory wire loom. and reinstall this on the sensor. Make sure that when you put the connector back on, you hear a nice little click that is fully inserted. The last connection that you will need to make is for the starter relay wire. And that's a separate wire, it comes with 10 feet, that you'll need to run over to the starter relay. We'll cover that here separately, as well as the block off plates you'll need to install and clear the codes. Once you get all that taken care of, you should be good to go.